Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC and we're here to talk about tools. All right, as you can see here, I've got the uh, F4 tools and offsets set up. Um, and in here, we've got a listing of all of the tools that we have defined. You can have up to 118, but technically several of them are taken up by specific items. Um, but what we're gonna be dealing with is I've got 10 tool holders on this machine. So we're gonna actually define one through 10 so that each one of those slots has got a specific um, bit. So I've got a variety of bits here. Um, some of my favorites here up front is the, uh, let's see, this one is the Downtown Jenny. So we're just gonna call it a down end, or Downward End Mill. Um, I've already got that one defined in the system. Um, then we've got the second tool number two is the uh, also a Downward End Mill, and that is the uh, Quarter Inch. So I've got various bits all along here. I've got 10 tool holders total. I've only had three defined at this point, um, but we'll go back and we'll define the rest of them in just a moment. Um, let's talk about our um, tools. So every tool that you've got configured on the system needs to be defined in here so that it can capture its Z offset, basically using the tool setter. You don't have to set the tool every time it changes a bit, but you do need to set it at least once when you define the bit. And that's what we're going to do right now. So right here, we have got the eighth inch end mill. I've already got that tool loaded. Tool number one is loaded. And you can tell that by going into the program uh, F2 or F3 screen. You can actually see right here, it says tool one. And then you've got your, your, uh, your, your name of that bit. In my case, I've called it an eighth inch down cutting end mill. So it's gonna have a square base. It's, it's basically um, just, it is the, which one is it? This is the eighth inch downtown Jenny. Um, so in here, let's see, oh, uh, tools. I've got my editing my first tool and that's where I define the tool name whenever I define what I wanna call this. And then of course we've got the Z offset. Now we've got the bit in there now and I've already defined that the tool diameter is an eighth inch. But let's say I've made some adjustments. I needed to poke that out a little bit further or whatnot. Now is an opportunity that we can manually request the tool to be zeroed. So it's going to bring the tool up to a safe height and drop it down until it triggers the tool setter. And then it will know exactly where the zero offset, the Z offset of this tool is. Now the smaller bits, it does have a pretty long way to go. Um, I set that up pretty high so that the larger bits that I've got in here um, don't get damaged by coming over. They need a safe place to start. So now we've got a negative 2.47244 um, inch offset here on this, on this eighth inch bit. So we're going to save that. We'll switch over to our second tool so we can auto Z that in just a moment. Now we've got our second tool in there. I'll pull up the definition for the second tool. And of course we've got a quarter inch down cutting end mill. This is the uh, quarter inch downtown Jenny. So that's the tool I've got in there. Um, I've already defined the tool diameter. And of course we can do an auto Z and it will uh, configure the, the Z offset for this specific bit. All right. This one is a negative 1.99606. So we can save that. And now you can see those Z offsets right here on the main screen, which is very convenient. Let me define a couple of the tools and we'll go through them all. And we're gonna define exactly where this circle is. And we're basically going to jog it around until we get it perfect. And then we're going to drop down to step mode and it looks pretty good. 
Now the edge of these things are tapered a bit, so if you're off by a little bit, it doesn't hurt. Um, it'll basically force your, your tool holder to scoot a little. What I like to do is take a picture of the screen. Now we can go back into our software. Okay, for our software, let's see, we've got our tool changer. So we're gonna go in here and this is gonna be 13.9449. And we're gonna save that. But let's go back into it. And once we get the next six positions of our, of our remaining tools, then we can come back and enter all that in and then save it and then we'll have all of the tools that we would like to find in the system. We've got the positions of all of our all of our uh, tools here, so we're going to go into setup, um, back into tool uh, tool holder, and so we've got our uh, four tools defined so far. Let's increase that up to ten, and let's start typing in numbers. Okay, so what we've got is the pick and place. So down here, down here where are the actual bits? So what I did was I ran the machine over to, the, over to one of the tool holders, went all the way down as far as I could, and then captured the Z position. So, so it was like the, the tool was like sitting right on top of the tool holder, like it was just sitting there. So that's where I captured the Z value and that's what's entered in here under the pick and place Z position. Now the tool holder Z clearance, that relates to whenever the tool is dropped off, so it drops off the tool, how far up does it need to come so that it clears the top of these tool holders? Now, since I'm gonna be using the V9, and the V9 is basically gonna be sitting like this coming across the tools, um, it is basically going to stop and then the tool, the, the spindle itself is going to drop down, grab the tool and bring it up for use. Now, you'll notice that the V9 will also be in a position where you can actually come over to your bit setter and you don't want um, basically any of these obstructions. Think of these like clamps, same, same experience applies where you don't want your Z-independent boot, which just floats there at the same Z height, you want your boot above all of this obstruction. So when it comes across, it can go through the, the brushes fine, but we don't want it bumping into the boot itself, because that will definitely cause some problems. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring the, the bindle, uh, once it releases the tool, up just high enough so that it can go over to the next tool and drop down and grab it. Now if you were using a another type of boot like a make sure that it clears all of the spacers or whatnot that you might have on this boot so that whenever it moves to get the next tool it does not get interfered with. We've got all of our bits defined. Um, let's see I've got 10 slots um, set to tool change it's just uh, tool change feed rate I just set it to zero for now. Um, We've got our two tool holder Z clearance, that's the height. We've got the pick and place Z position, that's where it actually goes down. So it comes up, it comes up to negative 4.5 to clear the tools. It goes down to six 
negative 6.289940 to actually grab the tool or to drop it off. And then, of course, here are all of these Z clearances. Save that, save that. Then we'll go back over to tools, and now we get the fun job of defining each of our tools. So I've already configured the first three, which is the eighth inch end mill, a uh, down cutting end mill. Um, uh, what is it? The eighth inch uh, downtown Jenny. Then we've got the eighth inch. I'm sorry, the quarter inch downtown Jenny. So I've got, I'm just calling them D, uh, D E M, down cutting end mills. Then we've got the uh, the Jenny, uh, the ba uh, the original, and that's under quarter inch U M U E M up cutting end mill. This is going to be the 16th inch one slash 16th inch tapered ball nose. TBN 06. Alright, so we're going to save that. Well, we can't set the tool offset yet. Um, so let's go ahead and define the rest of our tools, and then we'll come and we'll set those tool offsets. Now, uh, there's one thing we I neglected to do, and we'll need to do that now, is we do need to specify which tool, which slot, the each tool each tool is. Um, now I left the slots matching the tool number, but you can define additional tools and then manu manually change the which tool number is in which slot. But I like to keep them aligned, just so, just so it's. Um, in my head. So we're going to go in and change this. This one's going to be five. This one is six. This one is. Yeah, this is getting. So now it's pretty intuitive. So it's okay, so now we've got our bits defined. We've got what slot they are sitting in. And we can continue to define all of our bits if we wish. And later. If we switch to a different one, we can just redefine the, the sl which slot is each each bit is in. But we're just going to leave it like that, and now we can actually go about changing to that tool, setting the offset on it so that it saves it into the Z um, offset settings, and then it's in the machine's uh, the controller's library. So we're, now we can run the. T4 M6 and 3 is what it's got right now. Run. Now, of course, it returns back to its starting place, which is way back there in the back, in order so I can access all the tools. But now that we've got tool 4 in there, we can go back over here. Um, and we can auto set the Z. It will bring the, the machine right up to the front and start the bit setting process. All right, there we have it. That is the process of configuring all 10 of these tools that I have installed on my, on my uh, ATC setup. Okay, I hope all that made sense. Configuring your bit library and all that, it's not all that exciting, but once you have it defined, you can go into your uh, CAD software, define each of those bits and which num tool number it's in, and it makes designing a little easier. You know exactly which bit the machine, based on your file, knows exactly which bit to go pick up for which operation. You can technically have a 10-bit operation, a tool change um, throughout your entire carving. Um, I'm struggling to find a carve, a design that can actually use as many of these as possible so that I can really show it off um, during the carve. Um, hopefully I'll find something that'll, that'll, uh, that'll make that look nice. But changing the tools, 
adding those tool setters, ad or adding the tool setter, adding the tool holders, the racks. This is my second design that I've come up with. I'm certain I'm going to come up with more. Again, the, this tool holder, it's, it's based on a flat machine. So if you mounted it up on the wall or have it rotating um, for use or that sort of thing, these particular tool holders, these are gravity held tool holders. Um, in this case, these are the flush ones or semi-flush. If you've got a semi-flush only because this is for the QCW table on the woodworker. There's limited space over here on the left side because of that beam right there. If I were to cut into that beam, um, clear out a, a, a circular spot for each of these bits, um, I could actually have much larger bits than the quarter inch um, diameter of all of these bits. So I'm sure you've noticed that, that all of these bits are all quarter inch max. That's because I didn't want to cut into my QCW table. If you have a, if, if you have your own custom bed and you use these exact flush, hold, uh, flush holders, I would say sink them down a tad bit further because the top of the spindle only needs to come to the top of the tool holder. So if this thing was flush against the bottom, you could actually lower the tool even further and then give you even more clearance for your Z independent boot to flow right across it. Since I've got this limitation with the QCW table, um, the tip of the collet nut is basically sitting right on top of this metal right here. So I would have to cut into the metal in order to get this to drop down further. So that's why I've got that. But basically what I can do is any stock that I have, just make sure that it's, that it's up above a certain amount so that basically it's gotta be uh, slightly higher than this. So I'll probably build up, add a couple uh, waste boards below it just to build up the height of my stock material so that whenever I, so I can use my V9 boot and carve over it. I may actually, yeah, I may actually raise the entire machine, but that's another story. <laughs> but um, the tool, obviously the spindle can go down a lot further in order to grab the tools if they were mounted lower. So if you've got the custom bed, um, don't worry about it, you're good. And then of course your tool setter, wherever you've got that placed. Um, I know Onefinity is about to release one um, I'm about to release one for uh, other machines and that sort of thing, so stay tuned for more information on that later. Um, so if your machine doesn't support one, I'm hoping to add one and then provide that compatibility with Masso so you can run a tool holder, tool setter. But all of this lined up perfectly. I've, I will have all of these designs available for people who want to buy the tool holders uh, maker files. So this one, the flush one, and basically any other design that I come up with um, of a tool holder that can be 3D printed, it will be available to you. You can download and try and mix and match and see which one works for you. But if you have any questions, any comments, suggestions, leave them down below. You can also reach out to us at support at And yeah, remember, don't just own your CNC, Dominate it. Oop. Well, turn that off for a second. Testing one, two, three.